and welcome to my channel. Today I want to make um, a lampshade from a tray uh, mold. So therefore I um, put some glass bits with some gold glitter um, in clear resin. And now I'm trying to make my design in the mold. You don't have to use glass bits or uh, other raised stuff for this um, thing, but you can use almost anything. Nothing too stiff because we try to bend it uh, around a round surface, so it won't uh, so it won't be breaking while you're bending it around it. Um, but you can use glitter. Um, you can use flakes. Um, gold leaf, whatever you, you like. And um, but what you got to be aware of is that there is an inside and an outside of this lampshade later on. So if you have glitter and stuff like that that sinks to the bottom, uh, you probably will have the bottom side of the mold, your outside of the lamp, because otherwise you won't see the glitter anymore. So that's what you got to be aware of while planning your design. So I take some clear resin to pour right beside the glass bits so the color won't be bleeding too much into the glass stones. But that didn't work at all. So, yeah, but you'll see later on. I wanted the lampshade to be see-through where the glass bits were. Um, that's why I wanted them to stay golden, well at least uh, with the clear resin and the glitter. But and, uh, sadly it didn't work. But the outcome is still pretty. I mix up some resin with uh, red mica powder um, because I wanted a red lamp. So I'm just pouring it besides the clear resin to get the effect that I wanted. But like I said, it didn't work. Yeah, but you gotta see that um, it touches the the outer rim of the mold. And again around. 
So I leave a little space for the clear resin that I have. Here I dripped. I didn't want that. Now I'm trying to get rid of this drop, but that didn't work either, so I just left it. And then I mix some clear resin with a red color and some red go red glitter and poured it in between because this is the part I wanted to have see through also. But in the end it all will mix together and uh, still pretty. But I wanted really I wanted to achieve some some see-through windows uh, on that lampshade. Didn't work. Well, resin has its own mind. And now I'm trying to fill up my mold because the height wasn't uh, wasn't enough yet. It was like maybe a quarter inch or something. And I wanted to push with the clear resin the color a little bit to the outside so I can put some more color in there. So I'm pouring from a higher, a higher height to push the color outside. And here I noticed that my board wasn't level, so I was trying to fix that problem. Because the glitter made me realize that it was all running to one side of the mold. Trying to fix that problem here. And here you can see that uh, the colored resin still went uh, into the glass bits and um, now I'm trying to stir it around uh, to make it look more even that it uh, goes through the, the glass stones uh, on all the sides. Just fiddling around with it. There wasn't level, <laughs> but now I got it. And I'm adding um, more mica powder resin and later uh, some more of the resin with the glitter because uh, I didn't want those white gaps in there. As you can see, um, the mica powder uh, didn't really move until then and uh, I was trying to uh, figure out whether I have to mingle with it or not, but I just left it and it did the thing on, on its own.
and I'm leaving it to sit there for a while because I wanted the bubbles to raise. Here I use my little torch to just pop the bubbles, but you all got to be careful with the torch because you uh, can easily burn your mold or your resin, so be aware of that. As you can see, I don't wear a respirator because I have my window wide open and I didn't really want to do a voiceover. But my camera deleted all the all the footage uh, that I was talking about uh, on the video, so I had to do it like that. So here I have my oven trivet, um, and I'm pouring my leftover resin, and this is. Yeah, and it's still uh, a lot of resin that is left over, so I'm trying to use it for something useful. Um, I don't see no sense making 170,000 keychains or other uh, small stuff that I don't uh, really know what to do with. So I'd rather have uh, something like this where I can later on be creating with... Um, you know, like mosaic boxes or, or uh, mosaic tabletops and stuff like that, you know. And those crevices are so small, you get really tiny, tiny bits of resin. They have six corners, they're like, uh, like a hexagon, and um, I like it, you know. I don't really know what to do with them yet, but I'll figure something out. So, here I'm still trying to fiddle with it. Um, and you see the resin um, made its job somehow. It does anyhow what it wants to. And I'm just trying to uh, press the glass bits a little bit down because I don't want them to be too raised. So I'm coming back with the torch every now and then while I'm still in the room because some of them bubbles take a little bit longer than others to rise to the top. It is about eight hours later, and um, I'm demolding uh, my piece to wrap it around the glass base I got. What I didn't realize is that uh, my heater shut up and it was cold in the house. Um, Usually with my resin, it's uh, eight hours, uh, then it's dry to the touch, and it is um, cured enough to uh, wrap it around things or put it in bowls or something like that. But because it was too cold, this, it, the resin was still too soft. I should have realized that by, by now, but I didn't. So I kept on going and, well, it didn't pay off really because uh, this lampshade has some it has some is issues uh, that I'm trying to explain later. See, this corner was still too too soft, so it stretched out. 
This is the glass vase. I'm trying to um, lay the tray mold piece around. And there you can see it is like really, really still soft. So I'm trying to smooth it out really, really tender, not too hard because I don't want to stretch the, the resin out. I just wanted to mold it around it. Here I got some painter's tape that I'm trying to put loosely um, on the edges. So if you pull it too tight, you will see marks on the resin if it's um, if it's still soft as as this one I have right there. Taking my gloves off because the painters tape stick into them like hell. So you can see the glitter is really beautiful, you know, but you can't really see the glass um, inside the lampshade. I'm getting, uh, uh, how you say that? Some lights, some fairy lights to put in uh, to show you how the lampshade looks once it's lighted. I didn't think uh, the structure of the glass bits would show, but it does beautifully right there. At least I think it's beautiful. So it's in the morning now um, and it's about like another eight hours later. I'm peeling the tape off of the lampshade. And it's almost finished.
So carefully I try to loosen the sides so I get the piece off of the glass vase in, in one piece. It's still a little bit flexible. It's not 100% cured yet. You gotta be really careful. There, I got it loose on, the, on the one side, now has, is the other one left, and then um, we're about to see the almost finished product. And it slides right off of the glass vase. I didn't use no, uh, no oil or something like that um, when I was putting... Um, when I was putting the resin around the glass vase. And here you see the, there's, uh, uh, the, the resin, because it was too soft, it bent it inwards and left uh, this, this not so beautiful uh, piece of uh, crumbled up resin there. But in the end you won't be seeing it that much. Um, and yeah. I'm not an expert, I just do that for fun, so um, bear with me, maybe next time uh, it'll gonna be a perfect piece. But this is how it's gonna be looking uh, with some fairy lights in there. What's left to do now is that you glue the, the corners to get together so the lampshade will be more stable. And I'll do that um, with uh, a little bit of UV resin. And uh, this is the one I use. But this is not uh, really a good one because it doesn't smell as bad as the other ones. But uh, this one um, tends to yellow like really quick. And... Um, Sometimes it doesn't harden at all, you know, if it's not curing, um, then it's not working for me. So, for this resin, it's about 60 seconds uh, till it's hard, um, but this is with every UV resin different. So, it depends on what resin you use. You gotta check out the papers that you get with it. Mm. And now the other side, and then we are finished. I will show you uh, some pictures of the finished th finished lampshade with its foot and the light in there at the end. So, some more light, and here it is. Thank you for watching and I hope you all had some fun and got some new ideas and I'm looking forward uh, to making the next video for you all. Bye bye!